Well, welcome into this week's Degrees of Science. You know, it's been a pretty bad summer with heat and drought and all kinds of issues like that. But one thing we may not think of is how this hot and dry weather impacts bees. Well, I've got an interesting product I want to tell you about. And we're going to introduce you to Jen Rose. She is the uh, designer and uh, creator of Bee Cups. So, Jen, tell us what exactly are Bee Cups? Bee cups are tiny porcelain cups that collect a teaspoon of water for thirsty bees and butterflies. And you just simply put them in your garden. And every time you water your plants, it fills up with just a little bit of water to hold in the environment a little bit longer because water is super important to bees as well as nectar from flowers. So they're, they're beautiful. Y'all sent me a couple of them and they, they, look, they look really, really nice. So what, now your, your background, you're an artist. What, what went from being an artist to creating something like this for bees? So I consider myself an ecological artist and I'm always inspired by um, things around me. I love going to the coast and looking at the intertidal zone and all those kinds of things. But here in Texas, we have the prairie which has all of the creepy crawlies that the coast does, but it's just in a grassland. And so I started doing some research about um, insects and how they, um, what they need and how important they are to our environment. And I ended up combining my um, history with porcelain and with glaze chemistry into a product that hopefully is uh, beneficial to bees. I think it is, um, you know, it allows uh, bees to have a little bit of a fighting chance in the middle of this hot weather. So you're talking about learning about those and all the research you did. For people that may not know, how important are bees to us and our ecosystem and for most all of our foods and stuff like that? It's amazing. And it's not just the honeybees. It's, um, there are so many native bees that are important to our ecosystem as well. But bees pollinate about uh, one third of um, all the food that we eat. So all of the vegetables, all of the fruits, um, all of this is very important. And if we didn't have the bees in our ecosystem, it would really collapse. They're the, the backbone of our um, food supply. So you're, you're talking about your bee cups providing water for these bees. Why is the hot and dry weather so, so bad on the bees right now? Bees um, are smart little animals, and so they have developed ways to survive. Uh, everything that's living needs water, but they also use water for other reasons. Um, for example, there are specialized bees that go out, they drink water, and then they bring it back to their hive and spray it on their hive, and then other specialized bees will flap their wings to create evaporative cooling. So just like humans, bees can overheat and the water is important for them to be able to control the temperature of their hive, the temperature of their queen and the temperature of their, um, the eggs that they lay. So you not only made something that, that's really pretty and kind of you know, mimics the look of a flower and people aren't gonna see this in the video, but tell us about the ultraviolet ceramic uh, glaze that you invented for these. Right, so I have some right here um, and hopefully we can see this but uh, I have a background in glaze chemistry, so I developed a glaze, and I'm not sure how well it's showing up here, that glows under a black light. And that's important because bees have um, different kind of vision than we do. So bees see in UV color and see on the UV spectrum. And the fascinating thing is that flowers have developed UV colors and patterns to tell the bees where to go. So those UV colors and patterns create a bullseye or a target so that bees know exactly where to find their food source. And the bee cups mimic that um, so it catches the bees' attention and they're able to find the water source a little bit easier. So, you know, you got the ultraviolet glaze on there, but tell us about how the other stuff you did, like with the texturing inside to make it where oh, yeah. it's just like a flower for these bees. Yeah, so a couple of things, um, the bees need, uh, they have little toes on their back feet. It's kind of like little hooks. And um, bees will hang on to the texture on the inside of the bee cup. The cups are not glazed completely um, so that they have some grippy stuff. It's like a little bath mat for bees so they don't slip and fall. There's also this center mound in the center that gives them a little bit of um, texture if they need to climb back out. And um, in generally, it's just small enough for bees to get a drink of water, but not big enough for mosquitoes to breed. So 
the bee cup actually holds about half as much water as mosquitoes need to have us um, to breed and be successful with their eggs. So these both help the bees, but don't help mosquitoes. And so they're, they're beautiful. It seems like they really serve a great purpose. And it, if people were interested in getting one of these, or, you know, to me, it makes a great gift for somebody that's, you know, outdoors, love gardening and stuff like that. Where, where could people find these? So you can find them a couple of places. We sell directly. So my website is um, b-cups.com. So you can buy from us. You can also buy from Uncommon Goods, uh, which is another larger website made with or with handmade gifts. And then uh, we have a list on our website of other uh, national places that uh, sell bee cups. Awesome. Well, you know, you, you, these are beautiful, and you can tell you have a, a kind of an artistic side. Tell us about some of your art that you've done and still still doing now. Thank you. Um, yeah, so I enjoy creating new ways to um, to manufacture art. So I use a lot of porcelain still. Um, one of the things I enjoy doing is going on trips to the coast and seeing all of the sea creatures. Um, so I, uh, in, I weave um, sculptures together uh, with a loom and then I weave uh, porcelain into it as it's made and create very dynamic and mobile sculptures that sometimes I do some stop motion animation with, but I'm trying to inspire that sense of awe that I feel when I'm exploring nature and some of these very fragile, fragile ecosystems so that I can take a little bit of that back to the audience and that they can also have that sense of awe and perhaps care a little bit about all of these systems that are out there that um, we don't see every day. Well, Jen, I can tell you, I, I, was, I didn't know about this when, when y'all sent it out to us. And I'm really, I mean, one, it's a beautiful setup. I mean, got, I've got all of them here where we're showing. And I, I think it really serves a great purpose. So I re really appreciate you taking some time to talk about it. And again, we'll share y'all's links so people can find more info about it. Thank you so much. I'm, it's really great to talk with you.